You're listening to the Fairies and Folklore Podcast by Renal. I'm dark fantasy author Renal Jans of Gonferen. With over a decade of digging around in dusty folklore books, researching creatures of imagination that ignited my curiosity, I'm here to share the folklore in a nutshell and how I reimagined it for my writing in An Origin of the Fae. This is the Fairies and Folklore Podcast. Hi, I'm your host, Rinal Janssen von Fieren. You can just call me Rinal. In today's episode, we're continuing our exploration of the Feyre. This episode is brought to you by my Dark Court Sisters book series, available in ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Three sisters, three destinies, three ways to destroy the world. Go to renaldemythmaker.com forward slash Dark Old Sister Series for more. You can now support my time in producing the podcast, researching, writing and everything else involved by buying me a coffee. This can be a once-off thing or you can buy me coffee again in the future at your discretion. Go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash renal to support me. We're continuing our exploration of the Dark Fae. Today's fairy, Storm Hags, Folklore in a Nutshell by Renal. There are two distinct Storm Hags in folklore, the Celtic Calyx and the Storm Hag of Lake Erie. Let's first look at the Storm Hag of Lake Erie. This American fairy is known to lurk below the surface of Lake Erie near Presque Isle, much like a river hag. She is fond of wrapping her long green arms around the unwary and drag them beneath the water. Much like a sea witch, she calls up storms over the water. Sometimes she attacks during the storm, but other times she waits until the calm after the storm to appear with whipping winds and crashing lightning to drag the ship and crew beneath the water. Then there's the calyx. We already know that she is the terrifying personification of winter, and that her powers are more destructive as the season comes to a close. The people of Mullet Island will still speak of an evening in January 1839 when they could see the storm hag rising from the sea, her hands of blue and green fire reaching up as the wind blew in storm clouds and the sea raged around her before she disappeared in the gloom. The people knew what this meant. The fishermen at sea weren't coming home. Only a handful of boats that went out that morning returned. The rest were lost in the storm. Even the houses were leveled and their roofs blown away. Thus is the fury of the Celtic storm hag. I have found a third storm hag in Japanese folklore called the Shikomi. It roughly translates to terrible woman. This fairy is described as having sharp, jagged teeth and bloodshot eyes. It is said to roam the mountains, attacking humans and supernatural creatures alike. A savage creature, it is feared by all. Looks like storm hags are powerful, scary, and hungry for murder. And now for my interpretation of the Fae, in an origin of the Fae, storm hags. They are an ugly vein blue. They are truly hags. They cause storms wherever they go. Their cackling can be heard in the wind. They follow the calyx around because they are drawn to her strength and cold. They obey her every command, as long as it is in line with the wishes of the unseely king. As a little bonus, let's look at this fairy translated to Afrikaans, Stormweif. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of the Fairies and Folklore podcast and that you've learned something new about fairy. Remember that you can get a transcript of this episode in the description. If you're new to the podcast, why not go and grab your free copy of Unseen, the second book in the fairy tale series, on my website, renaldemythmaker.com. Loads of folklore, magic and danger await. Take care.